So I'm really happy uh, to be here with you today. And first of all, really happy to see like we have men and women. So this topic is really not about only about women, uh, male or gender. It's like all about diversity and how we can like make and drive the change together. Uh, so that's why we called the company 50 Intact and not women, because we really want to welcome uh, all allies and that's exactly uh, the purpose of uh, my talk today is uh, how we can do together, how can we drive the change together. So uh, Christelle uh, tell, <laughs> tells a lot about me. Uh, I was like the managing director of Willa and Willa is an incubator dedicated to female founders. It was one of the first in Europe which supported 500 startups co-founded by women. Uh, and I'm also board member of the French uh, UN committee, so pretty engaged uh, in terms of uh, uh, gender equity and what we can do together and related to innovation. So first of all, I want to, to tell you about the untold story of the woman who made the internet. So if you, you don't know this book, you need to buy it now. It's really uh, amazing. Uh, Claire L. Evans uh, wrote it like last year. And um, so this is all the stories you don't know about, uh, all the amazing female and, and, and female pioneers uh, in the programming and, and the tech industry. So of course, we can begin with Ada, you know all about the first uh, algorithm, but we don't know so much about the human computers. Uh, in the 40s and, 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 and 50s, actually, many of the programmers, so the calculators, were women. It was all made by hand, and, uh, and this is, uh, we, we call them the com computer girls. So this is really the, the beginning of the story, and, and so initially, we had more women uh, in programmation and calculation than men. Uh, and and uh, we have like um, the ENIAC girls, uh, who cr which created the first electronic computers. So we call them the ENIAC girls, six women, amazing. But can someone tell me uh, really the name of these six women? Can someone in the, in the room tell me about one name? No, no name. So I put the name here. <laughs> of these ENIAC programmers, Jeans Jennings, uh, Marilyn Westcoff, Ruth uh, Lichterstein, uh, Betty Snyders, Frances Billas, K. <coughs> McNasley. Uh, why I'm doing that, uh, this? Because if we have a lot of female pioneers, but nobody told us the story. So we erase all the, the stories of all these uh, female scientific pioneers. We don't know them, so how can you, as a young girl, uh, say something about a role model, you can like just imagine, because we don't know about that. <coughs> we have, of course, Grace Hopper, the first linger, the COBOL language, and the word bug. <laughs> Actually, uh, she invented, uh, invented this, uh, this <coughs> word. And so a lot of female pioneers uh, in the tech industry, but few names in mind, and, and something happened. Uh, for decades, the number of women studying computer science was growing, in fact, faster than the number of men. And in the 1984, suddenly, women stopped and stopped coding. Why? Uh, we changed totally the narrative. This is the first presentation of uh, the personal computer, the first advertising and the first figure as a white male user, aka finally the geek. In fact, the woman is like cooking in the kitchen and the guy is geeking. So in fact, it's like not programming, <laughs> just using a personal computer. And this is really the beginning of this new idea that computer is for boys. And it becomes the whole <coughs> narrative uh, of the Silicon Valley. And as you know, uh, Silicon Valley is really the beginning of this, all this tech story, and, and the, it spreads the world globally. Uh, and suddenly, we didn't have like any women in, the, in, uh, in computer science. Another, another idea of, um, of um, this advertising and this new narrative, um, all the studies reveal that families were much like to buy computer 
uh, for their boys and their girls, even they are really interested uh, in computers. So this is the beginning of all these stories and, and happening after on the education. And what we saw, and you saw really the, the curve is really impressive. So we have like this huge growth and it's all data and after a decrease until today. And today, so <laughs> what we have? We have only 25% of women in the workforce, in the tech workforce. 5% of them are in the leading position. I, was, uh, I need to talk about female co-founders because uh, this is a point in the tech industry. We have only 10% of female uh, uh, co-founders and 3% of CEOs. And they get a small of 2.7% of all the venture capital funding. So we have a huge situation uh, uh, in tech and we talk a lot about education and so we saw the numbers um, and this decrease of the, the women really studying. But in fact, we have a problem on the actual pipeline. One, in two, one woman in two is leaving tech permanently after, leave tech permanently after tech world, te 10 years, sorry. Uh, why? Uh, first of all, uh, this is a study from the Atomico Fund. Uh, they made a study on, um, in Europe um, for all female co-founders and women working in the tech industry. Uh, 46 of, uh, of women in tech say that they have experienced discrimination in 2018. So it's one year after Me Too. This is a perception they have, and uh, so this is a problem. <coughs> And the main reason is not so family reason and they didn't like the work or no. Uh, this is work uh, place condition, lack of promotion, poor management, gender pay gap. That's what they say about the situation and why they want to leave tech. Um, Another survey coming from the US, another uh, VC fund, first one, they, they asked to every um, female employee of the tech startup um, if they have like uh, the same change to get hired in a leading like senior role um, tech positioning. And 40% of them reported that the fact uh, that they are women is something uh, who really decreases the change to become uh, to be hired in a senior uh, role uh, position in tech. So, so that's that's a fact. This is perhaps a feeling, but that they really believe about uh, the tech industry. Um, one other um, one another reason, and in fact, what kind of the one top one reason. Uh, uh, for, for them to really be a little bit get tired of tech is the recurring sexist uh, jokes and the remarks. And sometimes it's like not something, you know, really like something really bad saying you are not, but you are good, you are really good for, for a girl at coding, or you're here for the female quota, it could be at school or during the uh, inside the enterprise. Or, uh, so some, a lot of, small, you know, remarks uh, from school to, uh, uh, to the, the first position and then the, the second position. And sometimes it's like 10 times a day, not, not, not really to be like mad or to be like really uh, to be um, a, a bad person saying that, but it's like small remarks every day and really hurts your legitimacy to become and to be uh, really endorse your a position uh, as a leader or, or really believing that your place, uh, this is the right place to be uh, for you. Uh, and we have a problem because we are losing opportunity today. Uh, so for the startup, for example, when you have like one female co-founder, this is 63% of, of more performance for, for the startups come from first round too. Uh, and for Europe, uh, we are missing a huge opportunity with 50% of women in tech, in startup, and in managing real position uh, in the tech industry. It is 9 billion of euro. We can, uh, of, uh, um, so sorry, we can have like uh, 9 uh, billion of euro uh, for the European GDP. So the growth <coughs> will be like really amazing. And when we have a diverse team, uh, this is 90% of innovation and more, more innovation. 
Why? Because when you are allowed to say your ideas and to be like really in a collaborative way and diverse uh, team, you can say a lot of things and you are not missing uh, the opportunity. So I'm not here uh, today to talk about uh, why it's important to have like more women in AI for uh, to fight against the bias, we know about that. Uh, and why we need to have like more women to address more users, <laughs> because we are 52% of humanity. But this is a fact, we are losing today opportunity. Uh, and I would like about uh, to tell you about the exception <coughs> of the Muslim countries. This is something really I want to address because I was looking at the number and saying, uh, and Tunisia, uh, this is amazing. 58% uh, of uh, uh, the, so 58% uh, of women in science, so in Tunisia, so in the proportion, the, the ratio between male and women. So you have a majority. And I was like asking about why. Algeria is the same, uh, so Benin, but for Tunisia and Algeria, I know why. Uh, so it's all about, I was talking about the narrative and the culture. Um, in fact, in Tunisia, you have two choices. You can like choose a, to be an engineer uh, in the construction and so building uh, uh, or being, uh, becoming like a programmer, <laughs> a programmer and doing programmation and data science. So they are choosing because this is a, all the families are really encouraging them to become uh, engineer and they are choosing what is like the easiest things to do at home. So it's like not about freedom and really uh, equality, but I was like about wondering why in developing country we have this huge disparity and some Muslim countries who are like not so, not so much developed in terms of uh, gender equity are different. So I just want to, 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 to show you the difference in the cultural perspective. In Russia, you have a lot of women in tech too. Why? Because it was communism and a workforce is a workforce. So you, you need to do the work as a woman or a, a man. So it's all about the perception uh, just to show you, uh, so it's not uh, saying it's really good countries or you need to do the same, uh, but just about the narrative we are building all together um, and what kind of change we, we can do uh, as, a, as a parent. I know that Dipti is here, I don't know where she is. She was here, you know that. The narrative uh, from the school, from the parents, uh, all your environment today, uh, we know that it's really important to drive the change uh, in terms of education and also the pipeline you will see during uh, uh, your workforce condition. So the topic today was how to attract and retain more women in tech. So I will not give you the perfect secret sauce, but <coughs> some ideas and some use case uh, I have seen like uh, from startup. And, uh, and please, uh, if you have like any question, you can ask. And I think it could be like really, uh, really interactive. And, uh, and if I'm saying like something you, you, you think is stupid, say it please <laughs> and, and ask me. <laughs> so first, um, I think we are in a new situation. It's like post me to movement. Uh, we have like huge story we don't need to, to tell about anymore, but we heard a lot of things about that. So now we have a problem of pipeline and we have a problem of retention. So we need to drive an urgent change to tell the woman in tech, you are really welcome and this is what we are doing and we are dri driving the change internally and we are uh, working on that so you can come, it will be a safe place. So I think it's the time to do that and to do it like seriously, not, some, not saying like as a communication or something like that, but driving the change and say what you are doing to drive this change and, and tell about your data, tell about what you want to do and really making like a big call uh, to, to, because this is a fight of talent. We know that we have few women in the pipeline. We know that other countries such as Tunisia, so perhaps we can look a little bit around and not only uh, in the, the small uh, area. Uh, and so this is a need, it's a need now to, to really target them and, and, and really speaking really seriously uh, about that and acting. Uh, this is urgent because uh, just for, to, to talk about this uh, situation, your consumer are waiting for that too. So 
I was like uh, speaking about the delay tuber movement come from women really uh, consumer. Uh, and then it became like a great uh, and big movement against uh, a company. So we need to be aware uh, about that our consumer want to, uh, to have like another kind of, um, of uh, um, they don't want to hear about that anymore. <laughs> so they, they want really to see the change uh, inside uh, the big uh, tech companies today or, or big corporation. Uh, so it is like the, the Me Too and what's happened. And so now for men and women, this is non-optional to lead uh, really uh, a change for, about diversity. And they are waiting that uh, from their leadership. In fact, um, this is a new study uh, of uh, first round two in December. And they ask to all the employees, so men and women, uh, if they want to stay uh, in a company who are not acting really about diversity, and, and the number really increased three times. Uh, they are more likely to anticipate leaving the company within the next year if nothing changed. So it's really important to see, this, uh, to, to see that number. It comes from male and female, and it's not about only, uh, only women today. So why GAFA must drive the change? <laughs> you, everybody is looking at you. All the startup, I'm at, we are based at Station F, and you know that Silicon Valley and, and what we are doing is like such amazing. That's great. You are great companies. Everybody is looking at you. So the number and what, um, so what happened, it's really important. So it is a new data visualization. <laughs> so sorry, I'm not one to be like it. Uh, but uh, it's come from Matt uh, Stempeck, uh, CEO of Tally. This is a great application for, for women and people of color. And, and so he makes like some data visualization between the repartition uh, between uh, male and, and female employee. And we have the same uh, for the minorities. I think it's kind of, it's, it's a way of seeing really concretely that the number is not so good. So you see the number at Google about the male. Uh, uh, so you have like 31% of, uh, of female. Uh, for, for Facebook, it's like 33. Uh, for, for, for Apple, you see like this small pieces. <laughs> it's 33 too. And so for Amazon, the numbers are, are really good, in fact. But what they did, they didn't reveal really um, the number uh, between, uh, between the, the um, technical and non-technical. So <coughs> what? I think they are all in the warehousing and stuff, and women and minorities. What? In the warehouses and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot more employees. Yeah, yeah, in, uh, in, uh, in terms of African um, so type employees, they are like much uh, better, if, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, really. Uh, but they didn't say about the, uh, the, um, the, really the repartition between the technical and non-technical. Uh, so we don't know exactly the number. And for Google, this is the first year, I think, uh, I saw that in the report, because this is like the new numbers, that the publication uh, is done. So, but we see that transparency is not enough, and we need to find solutions together to accelerate the ch this, uh, this change, because uh, now all the startups are doing the same. And, and you are really the people uh, who are really, they look at, they look at you, what you are doing, and what you are, how you, you are doing the things. So in terms of attraction, what we can do. So first, uh, so I'm talking for founders, and of course, when you are like big team, uh, uh, so and big corporations such as uh, Google, you can do it in your team. But you need to think when you are coming into a new team, really to build diversity from day one. Because after, it will be really harder. This is the story of all the Facebook, Google. At the first time, it was like all male employee engineer coming. And then it's super hard to drive the change. Because when you have like a black uh, employee is coming, a woman employee, and you are alone, this is a question of culture. It's like kind of hard to be like, to feel like really an inclusion uh, uh, and to be like really include inside the, your, it's like logical in fact. Um, so first, um, uh, your, the top management, really all the leadership positions need to have like uh, awareness about unconscious bias and the strong involvement, uh, uh, involvement of the CEOs. I have like studies and I saw studies that uh, two years ago, uh, one founder's like um, 
uh, on four uh, in, the, in the tech industry in the US don't care about diversity at all and, and work-life balance. They don't care. <laughs> so just it's not a priority, but really not at all. So the first, uh, it's come from the top, from the manager, the leaders, and the top management. If not, nothing happens. Second, uh, we are talking a lot of, about referral inside the corporation, and so, but the problem is when you have like all uh, white male employees, the referral is like all male uh, uh, and white uh, so referral employees. Why? Because uh, the networking uh, for, for male are really quite different uh, from women. Uh, I, there is like various studies about that and I can give you like all the perhaps links after, it could be like interesting for, for you. But uh, everything comes from your internal network, so from the school and, uh, and, and really something really near. Uh, and, and for a woman it's like a lot of uh, meeting you do with a lot of people, we don't know in fact how to network well, but our kind of network is like more, um, uh, I don't know to say that in English, but uh, it's not coming from the school, from the first cycle, we have like a lot of uh, different profiles uh, in fact. And so if you have like a majority of white male, the referral will be difficult, so you need to go uh, really outside the network, finding another communities. Uh, if not, uh, you are replicating the same, the same faces and the same people. Um, second, uh, we talk about that with you, but make sure that your job post and your recommendation <coughs> process is gender neutral. I know that Google is using like new kind of, uh, uh, of, um, of uh, tools to, 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 to write like gender neutral uh, announce, but it's all the process you need to analyze. I want to give you the example of a, a new school in Paris, a growth, cycle, uh, a growth hacking school um, um, built by the ex uh, deputy CEO of Epitech, uh, Cyril de Geiger, uh, built the work at school factory. The first year um, he had like a lot of application, he received a lot of application and in the selection process at the end they have like 70 or 75 percent of men. And he said no, no, no. I, I was like at Epitech, it was, uh, at Epitech, it was a nightmare. I had 95% of guys and, and it was like building strategy with all the people to not showing that there is a lot of guys inside the, uh, the, the school, but nothing happened and he, he didn't like really succeed to drive the change inside the school. So he said to, the, um, to his team, look at, we need to look at the process. What can we do to change that? And so they, they look really deeply into the process. And finally, uh, they, they really, really realize that they are doing like a session with like pitch session, kind of pitch session. And the guy is saying, yeah, I'm the best. I have like uh, all the competencies and all the skills. Uh, I will be the, um, the best. But finally, they didn't know really about uh, the, the soft skills, the hard skills. So and they built like another tool to analyze the soft skills too, and, and, and they changed the process of, um, uh, for the discussion uh, after entering, uh, before entering into the school. And so finally, there are 50% of uh, female in the second batch, and the result with the company was really good because uh, all the apprentices from, from this uh, school uh, were really appreciated by, uh, by, uh, by, the, by the enterprise. So showing that women are really have the same skills that guys and finally this is a really good appreciation coming from from the company so they they continue to drive the change and they will do it and on more technical uh, now um, program and, uh, and so that's important and I think he wrote a lot of things you can look at uh, how we change the process and uh, how we decide to really uh, change the mind of all of the team and not only uh, 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 so not only. Um, I think it's really important to endorse your female talent. We are, you have like a lot of role model, but inside the recruitment process, it really proves that if you have like a male and a female together, showing that uh, we can like uh, being like uh, be a manager or having like a senior tech uh, position, it's really good. Uh, and so, 
uh, not only women, but if you have like male and women, it could be like really uh, better uh, to hire and to feel like the, the company is inclusive and they have like a role model. You can like endorse them uh, also uh, into like tech communities uh, at school or, or, uh, or I think it's really important to show that you have like uh, people in a senior uh, position that you can really, uh, really highlight. Uh, I want to talk about the culture fit because in startup world we are hearing a lot about that. Uh, are you matching with uh, our culture fit or not? So, <laughs> and and, uh, and Sarah Nam from uh, the CEO of uh, Lever. Uh, so this is a young HR company uh, in the Valley, and she was like the only CEO, and all the team was. Um, uh, male dominated. <laughs> so after two years, she decided to change everything. And all the employees look at uh, what they can change. And so finally, they decide that, um, that during the, the recruitment process, the culture fit is not uh, qualified. Why? Because this is really um, something subjective. This is subjective. And so you can measure it. So you need to be really precise and go deeply into the skills and the qualification, and not only a feeling of uh, with the, uh, this girl will match with the culture fit or not. I will tell you the story that I heard in a coffee from developers, young developers. And I was hearing what they are saying about the recruitment process. So three young girls in Paris, uh, uh, one from um, the East, uh, one from London, and another one, because I talked with them <laughs> after, and, uh, and one from France. And they are saying, that's really terrible, this recruitment process in tech company, because uh, I didn't match with the culture fit, because the culture fit was playing ping pong, or, or did you like to, to play video game or not? But she said, you know what? I like, I like, I don't want to say that in English, it's flea market, no, brocante, brocante, flea market. And I can't say that because if not, they will say that I'm, I have no culture fit with the company. And another guy was like a HR in, um, in a fund. And he told me that every day, uh, he's talking with a 25 or 30 years old guy saying, oh no, we can't hire that one. She's like 32 and she had a, 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 a child, we, a kid, we can't. It's not uh, we, we don't have any culture fit. How can we, we can drink <coughs> beer after and, and having party? Uh, she will not like be included inside the company. And the guy was really fighting about uh, that. And even at Jaism, saying that experience is super important. If you have like only 25 or 30 years old uh, guys, what will you do? You need experience, you need skills, you need people really diverse, but it was a fight every day and this is really true story and i'm telling uh, something like uh, i invented it's really true story so these kind of things about culture fit you can think it's really cool and of course the values are important but i'm talking about you know this kind of feeling of ah we are not the fit you know and of course so if you have like 90 percent of guys and 10 percent of girls sometimes it's difficult to have like the culture fit that we can say so per perhaps it's better to to have like more about the qualification, measures, and data than, uh, than this kind of um, subjective assessment. Um, and so I was about saying about value soft skills and non-technical skills, uh, and not just technical skills. Because we are in an era of uh, where when you have like technical skills, you are like kind of you are God, you know, <laughs> yeah, everything is looking at you, everything wants to hire you. Uh, but if you are good in, at the technical skills, are you really good at the management? So when you have a code review, what is like the better thing? Is really to take your team really and engage them to drive and to find a solution and tell it's not good and be like uh, tough or no, you need to be collaborative. So the better technical, uh, uh, people will uh, will be uh, to be uh, to be a leader or manager or I don't know a tech lead will be those with also these soft skills and and women have that sometimes so you need to really look at that and look at uh, how to change the collaborative way into your team and not looking only uh, about uh, the technical aspect I think. I was, uh, yeah, I put like some use case. So Duolingo achieved the 50-50 ratio. Uh, it was like uh, two years ago. 
uh, in the tech team, I was like really talking about the tech team and not all the, the company. Um, and so what they, what did they, um, they took the decision based on data. So for example, they decide to not go in all universities. They look at the numbers and they say, okay, we are going only in universities with over 18% of uh, female students. When you need to partner with some universities, they took all the numbers and they say, okay, we will concentrate uh, our action and what we will do uh, with, uh, with university, we, uh, with, uh, we need to have like at least that number. So of course they increase the public outreach by involving the employees, male and women inside the communities, could be at universities or events. And they run like an employer resource group uh, and they, they ask mm, the same that uh, Rocket School did. They look at all the process, took all the ideas and really change everything. In less than two years, they, uh, they, are, they, they were successful. Of course, they are not uh, so big, <laughs> so it's like small company in comparison of Google, but perhaps we can do uh, that uh, at, the, um, the, at the team level. We don't look at the, if everybody is, looking, is doing that in every team, I think we can like, achieve uh, some kind of success. Another story is like Symfony, I don't know if you should know them, it's like the CEO is French, but uh, the company was uh, really built in, in, uh, in the Silicon Valley. Uh, this is a crypto messagery uh, from David Gurley. And I was talking with him and he said, you know what? I have 40% of women in the RID department. And I said, what? And no story, he didn't write anything about that. No, he told me, it was with, I really decided that we need to have like, since the beginning, more women. So, uh, and I said, okay, it's cool, but uh, you are in Palo Alto, tell me the story, please. <laughs> and uh, he told me that, uh, so he said, okay, I was in China, in India, and I decided to diversify the team really quickly. I put all the benefits, all the, the advantage of parental leave, and finally, what happened? He said, <laughs> so in this case, the referral from women works, and he, he had like organic, uh, and, and we feel uh, from female applicant really naturally. And he really succeed to, to, to have like 40% in Palo Alto. I think it's kind of a uh, great achievement uh, for a CEO. He was like the head of Skype, um, uh, David. And uh, so I think it's kind of interesting because if you are going on the website, you can see that. But he said, okay, I diversify my team really quickly at the beginning and then the benefits, and then we change everything. Um, so, attraction is cool, but retention is better, because if we, <laughs> we are losing every year a lot of women, I will attract uh, the new one. <laughs> so, I want to show you this book, and uh, I, I take like one, um, one um, uh, so I, I took the book with me, and it's really cool and really good because it's all the, um, the data, uh, really a bias, really the, the world, and showing that the, the world is really uh, designed and, and built and designed for men. And uh, there is like really a huge part about the tech belief uh, in meritocracy, and especially in tech. And saying that the myth of meritocracy in the tech industry is really conjuncting to all the unconscious bias you can imagine. Because the first preoccupation, the top one, of every tech founder is hiring the best people and for building a diversity it like the seven uh, positions. Uh, so that means that best person is not diverse person uh, sometimes. Because it's like all about you know, subjective assessment with the, fine, the best person. If you don't put like data, then to look at the number. For girls, um, we are not looking at, uh, at the same, like we are not looking at brilliant, brilliant and smart since the school, in the university, and even if you are like a professor, uh, you are not, uh, the, the student are not looking at you as brilliant. So it's like that. We have a bias from, from, the, from the school. So how can we be like the best? people try it. And a lot of founders, uh, so I'm based in Station F, remember, and so I'm talking a lot with uh, male founders, and they say, okay, I want women, but I want to hire the best. So, so that means that you don't have, like, uh, the best people are not women? 
that's that's totally crazy because the skills are the same. Of course, the pipeline is not so so big, but we have, and you need just to find. Uh, and, and another thing is like the performance. Um, in this book, uh, she, she, she highlights a survey of like 248 uh, uh, reviews from tech companies. And in this review about the performance, and 85% of all these companies are based plans about uh, performance and uh, so merit plans to, to, be, uh, to increase your salary or to, 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 get, uh, to, to have a promotion. And uh, so on this, tech rev uh, on this review, uh, the majority of them for women uh, have like a personal um, criticism, so negative personal criticism, aggressive, uh, um, it was like bossy, aggressive, uh, um, also strident, emotional and irrational. For men, we can see only aggressive appears in the review. But that's coming to your performance. So it's like personal criticism, like negative perception of yourself. But if you are like, if you look at warm and competence, <laughs> uh, so if we put, uh, so a, a man really look at warm, is perceived as, as really competent. But a, a woman really <laughs> warm, <laughs> it's like perceived as uh, incompetent, you say. So, so we lose <coughs> every time. We are bossy, it's not good. <laughs> we have not so, per so much performance. We are warm, we are not competent. And we are born, we are not brilliant. So, uh, so it looks like it's not meritocracy, in fact. This is the institutionalization of unconscious bias. <laughs> uh, so, and, and we need to be aware about that, because if we are not aware, it could be like, OK, I want to hire like, just the best person. Yeah, so I didn't say that, but uh, after 35 years old, uh, we have a difference uh, of uh, one, uh, how do you say SMIC in, uh, in English? Low, low salary income? Minimum wage. Minimum wage. Sorry, thank you very much. So you have like a, a difference of one minimum wage uh, between male and women. So this question of meritocracy performance about your, uh, increasing your salary and getting promotion, have really direct consequences. Consequences. Um, so, uh, so we can say, okay, what can we do? Uh, is your company exclusive enough? Ask them. We can collect data. We can collect needs every year. We can collect these needs and analyze the data. Uh, I want to tell you the story about uh, Sheryl Sandberg when she was at Google, and so she get pregnant. She uh, she had to take the car, and the, really the parking was really far away from the company. Uh, she was like uh, already at the top management and every day she had to work. And she said, okay, come from, to see the CEO, it was like really near from her, and said, okay, I can't anymore, I'm like really pregnant, can I have like just park my car like in front of the company, please? I oh, yes, why not? Good idea, we, do, we will do the same for all the pregnant employees. So we need to have like someone in the top management but we can collect data, in fact. So I, I was talking about pregnancy, but we can imagine like really collecting the data and the insight every year to perceive all the signals. We can like show that we will lose a uh, woman inside your company. Uh, another thing is like uh, uh, when you begin your, your, um, your career, you have in fact a lot of amb ambition. I, I read a lot of story about like, 90% uh, of the women really want to, to, to be like in the senior uh, position to access to creative technical, uh, technical roles. But uh, in fact, it doesn't happen, so they are waiting. And finally, uh, the ambition declines um, as they progress in their career. It's not something really you, you can analyze really from the beginning of the career. And then 10 years after, your ambition declines. So I think promote them earlier. It's like super easy, but uh, we need to do something <laughs> to, 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 to keep it like really in the first step inside the company. We need to, to show the talent, to see the talent, analyze and really promote them. And so we have a lot of personal training um, about women, be bold, uh, you need to dare, go, or unconscious bias training on individual. But in fact, we need to track the data. And if you track the data, you can see where are the really 
the bias inside your company and what you can do to really, uh, and you are Google, so you can do that. <laughs> you are really good in data, really much better than everybody in the world. And uh, so I want to show you that. So this is not a tech company, but this is a Reykjavik energy company. I met like a guy who really conducts the, product, uh, the project and I think it's really interesting. They closed the gender, gap, uh, gender pay gap in 10 years. So 10 years. It's long, but it's okay. Uh, so finally, they achieve. <laughs> and uh, so first, this is the CEO decision. He said, "Okay, we are like really in the energy industry. We have a problem, really huge problem. The disparity was uh, was uh, was really big." And he put that on the top uh, priority of uh, the entire company. They use a tool called Pay Analytics, and they put this tool inside all the HR management system, and it was based on data, and not only on the manager data. So. At every uh, salary increase, promotion, the machine said, OK, why? You need to explain. And we need to say, OK, we have a problem because we have another position. She's like uh, here from, uh, with good skills, good performance. And so you need to explain and we need to find why. And sometimes the decision would to say no. And so they, they really increase uh, the number. So they put like first so, um, the people with the most differences and then they analyze to not disturb too much. So it was a lot of mathematics. Uh, there is some article that the founders uh, wrote in, uh, she's a, in the company have a female co-founder and uh, it was an HBR. It's kind of interesting what they do to, uh, to, to really do that. So we can do it in fact. And it's just they plug all the system about the salary and HR all together. So it's like not a part of uh, and all uh, can look at the data and it's kind of interesting to, to know about that. Uh, I want to talk about mentoring quickly. Mentoring is good, but sponsoring is better. And uh, we need male allies to that. So, so do, do you know the difference between mentoring and, and sponsoring? Who knows? Nobody? Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, sponsor is uh, the person who will, will create professional opportunities for you. Or maybe there is a project or something like that. Uh, and the mentor is the one who is going to advise you on how you're going to manage certain situations. Exactly. So, so in fact, we can advise someone to be like better, or but we can say, hey, you know what? Uh, I heard about this position. I talk about you because I know that you have the skills and you can be the best. So that could really help. And um, as we have like a lot of more of male in a senior position, you can do it for 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 women too. It's just to be aware about the situation and to do it for someone else. So I put the case of a conference. You can say, oh, it could be great to talk at this conference, or, oh, you know what? I recommend you to be like the speaker at this conference. And how can I help you to be prepared, perhaps? Uh, so that is the end of my talk. I just want to say a small word about uh, 15 Tech. Uh, so 15 Tech, what we are? So first, uh, we are uh, a platform who want to connect uh, the best pipeline of women in tech, so female founders and women working in the tech industry to the tech ecosystem, to all the people who want to diversify. So we just launched the platform uh, end of November, so you can join and you will be really welcome. Uh, and we match uh, based on skills and interest. And, and then we will like really um, connect all the ecosystem, really uh, women friendly ecosystems, so that means company with a job opportunity uh, and what they are doing for women really. And we really analyze that. It's like not you say and we say, oh, okay, you are really a great company to work. Um, and uh, you can share, so we have a matching, uh, we are welcoming Alice, so that means male and non-binary and all the people, it's like not only a woman-only community because we can't change without to be like all together. Uh, and, and the idea will be like, so first uh, showing all the great company to work uh, and just your female talent if you are like uh, on the platform. Uh, we want to increase the retention employees, so we want to help to listen, uh, so with surveys and analytics and dashboard recommendation. Uh, and, and, and three, because uh, we know that is a lot of business opportunity, we want to promote startup program or uh, corporate ventures and all the call to application for startup today, uh, because we have a lot of female founders on the platform. Uh, so we are a team, I have like uh, our CTO, uh, Julien, 
you will come after <laughs> my co-founder sorry for her she's like a uh, personal like uh, um, problem today so she can come and Leticia uh, our CMO and our favorite team member Nina <laughs> she's, uh, our back-end developer yes she plays football American football but we really hate stereotypes um, so and that uh, is uh, like one of our investors, Geraldine Lemer, and, uh, and really totally agree with that. Uh, it's not a question coming from men or women, it's like all together that we can build the next uh, balanced ecosystem. So join us. I have one question. Um, you talk about the withdrawal process and uh, how it can um, uh, the opportunity to have a more diverse team and it's not only for gender, it can be for any for other minorities. diversity or underrepresented group. And um, the challenge we have at Google is that uh, we have a huge growth of teams and uh, one of the solution to, to hire fastly is with roles. Yeah. And, um, but it is against our um, goal of having more diversity. And I wanted to know what could be a solution when you have a, I have the feeling that when you want to build a diverse team, it takes time. Yeah. Uh, it's long-term effort. And when you are in the system, it is only driven by short term. What is the best solution to avoid, to not rely only on withdrawals? and how to to make sure that the managers leaderships also will be involved in this and not only with what because this is something which is super easy and yeah. you need to hire um really uh i'm sorry uh, ah oh yeah sorry uh no i i don't have the perfect solution but one kind of things google can do is really rewarding the manager who are doing this job this is something it is time <coughs> So you are spending time to do that and you are spending time to really uh, help the company to be diverse. So, so of course, being like connecting to all the communities who can help you easier to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to hire uh, talent and to be matched with people really outside your network, of course, but also to be rewarded, uh, it's like that, really to, to, as a manager, to do that. And, and a lot of companies are beginning to uh, not only analyze your performance and your time in terms of recruitment, but also what you are doing really to build a diverse team. And I think could be like something uh, uh, we can do. No. And this is the purpose of our platform. Yeah, yeah, of course, like to match people uh, outside your network, of course, but I want to say also that if you are spending time that's the same for, for women who are doing like a lot of administrative tasks, you know, and you don't, no, nobody look at that, you know, because we are doing that. Uh, but uh, nobody look at that in your performance or something like that. But if you take time and, and you succeed, this is a vector of performance for me. Can you explain a bit more how your platform can help company increase diversity? Yeah. So what we, we are building, so as I said, we are like kind of, you know, the, the new, new startup. So we launch uh, a system based on skills and interests so you can match. So first we are attracting a lot of women um, in all the fields. So, so of course female founders, but not also. We are working with, with universities, with tech school, we partner with Sporty2 and, uh, and Simplon. And, and so all these women are looking for opportunities and sometimes since the internship, they have a lot of difficulties to find like place to be. And our solution want to match job opportunities and, and people really can match with your, with a, but not only base. So it could be like on skills, but also uh, about what you are offering uh, in the workplace as a workplace condition. So you want to work in remote sometime, we need to, sh to highlight this, uh, the company who can do that. So that's the, really the vision we have. We will launch the first company page in March. So we have already commitment uh, from Société Générale, AXA, Prisma, and we will work with the next uh, 120, normally with uh, Cedrico, we are working on that. And, and, and we are working about the matching, so recommendation. So at the beginning, it will be what you are doing and, and really uh, having like a, a job board with gender neutral announce. 
and highlighting diversity story, and then the matching solution. It's clear? Oh, yeah, it's clear. And so how Google can be part of this story? So anybody in the room can join the platform? So first, join, because uh, we need to have like a, a lot of people who can advise. As a, as a tech leader, male or female, you can advise a young student. Uh, we have like the case uh, last week, a young student in uh, crypto in London asked to the CTO and resident of Microsoft, so uh, of Microsoft for Startup to be matched because she wants to to talk about AI and, and how to become a CTO, for example. <laughs> so it's like, for now, it's like connection like that. But then it will be like really regarding the job. So we are like really, uh, we need to, uh, to give resources and people so you can join. And uh, just why 50? Why 50? Because we want to achieve the parity. We have 52% of the population, but I didn't want to put women in the name. So it's like 50% off. We don't know if it is a perfect name. We have like good, uh, so we know, but I don't, uh, the fact is we have, we have such percent of male who are following us is important. Uh, so I don't know, but I didn't want to put like woman or her in the name. Uh, it's all about uh, gender equity and, and diversity. So I don't know, yeah, but it, it was to really the goal to achieve a 50 with 50 ratio. Okay. Thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you.